Hello guys, welcome to Study IQ. I am Safir. In this session, we are going to continue our discussion on Mauryan period. So we are in the module of art and culture and the first chapter is what we are actually discussing that is art and architecture. We have completed Indus Valley Civilization which is very important from the perspective of art and architecture and then we skip this uh, Chakolithic period and the Vedic period, early Vedic and later Vedic because there is not much development with respect to this particular topic in that era, in that time. Okay, And then we, come to, when we came to Mauryan period and we discussed the basics yesterday. So today we will be talking about the stupas so we will be discussing the stupas so guys if you see what are stupas stupas actually so stupas are actually the places where the relics of buddha were kept means the remains of buddha were kept so after the death buddha's remains and upon that it will be built okay so around nine are with the uh, original relics or remains of buddha and there are many 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 much more also is there which are symbolic okay so here what you want to write is just one line if you want you can write stupas are the places where the remains or the relics of buddha were kept and it is also the worship place of buddhism Okay, now if you ask me whether the concept of stupas was there even before Buddhism or even before Buddha, yes, it was there. Okay, so when we talk about Buddha, it is which century, right? It is in the 6th century BC is what we are actually discussing that I have done anyway in the last session. So if you see uh, the uh, this period, 6th to 10th century, which is your later Vedic period, right? And then even before also there will be early Vedic period, right? And you know, during this period, there were saints, okay? So later Vedic period, saints are there. Early Vedic period, saints are also there. Now, why we call them as saints? Because of some kind of knowledge that they acquired. Now, how they acquire knowledge? Not by reading any textbooks or anything. It is like uh, they will sit for meditation for long period of time, irrespective of day, night, maybe two months, three months, four months, and they... Uh, they get that knowledge from the God, right? So that is why we call them as saints and without food or anything, they will be able to survive for that uh, meditation. So sometimes what will happen during this process, when you sit for two, three months, the climate may change, the situations may change. And stupas also mean heap of sand. So the heap of sand will come and cover them. So maybe the face like this, if they are sitting, like this this is a imagine that this is a meditating position so this is their head and what will happen is heap of sand will come and will cover this so what you can see in the top is actually the head and rest of the body will be covered with the heap of the sand now when they die they will be buried here itself so the relics of them the remains of them will also be kept there so uh, you can see structure is already made and in the, in the same shape and in the same structure they will be buried over there. So something which you are following in the early Vedic period or later Vedic period or in general Vedic period, guys even now you are continuing that even if you see some uh, the Hindu culture like you bury them right and uh, once it is done whatever remains are there some bones and all you will take it and you will keep it and you will uh, you know i actually don't know exact culture but uh, they will uh, put that in the river for salvation or whatever it is but in that area where you buried the body what you will do actually is you will construct something with the same sh let's say this is your uh, the, this is where you are actually buried the body so this is how the body is kept right so what you will do is you will make some structure like this with that same size and the shape so same way here when the saints are dead with the relics of saints or the remains of saints, they make the same kind of structure and the shape. So this is what actually stupa. So stupas means it is the heap of sand and then these are the structures which are made with the relics. So this concept was there even before Buddha also. But when Buddha died, for the followers of Buddha, Buddha is the greatest saint of all the time. So what they did is the followers of Buddha made bigger and better stupas. 
with the relics of Buddha. So I hope you understood this concept of saints and how the stupas are made. That's the background information. That's not important for you. We need to look at stupas, where it has been made, what are the purposes, what it represents and all those things is what we are looking at from the perspective of exam. But just to make you clear, the background, I have discussed about this, just understand one thing that this concept of stupa was there even before Buddha, right? So when Buddha died and the followers, they, they, they know that Buddha is the, for them, Buddha is the greatest saint of all the time. So they want to make a bigger and better stupas and that's how it is actually made, right? What is the significance of Ashoka when we discuss about uh, stupas? Actually, Ashoka is the one who started making institutionalized stupas, okay? Or institutionalized or planned stupas. So during this time, Ashoka's time, stupas are getting institutionalized. And it can also be considered a structure of, you know, some religion for the first time. So before, you won't see any such structure for religion, not even temple. Forget about uh, masjid because Islam was not there at that point of time. Christianity, we are talking about BC. So Christianity is also not there. So there is nothing related to Islam or Christianity is there. Not even temple is also there. So this is what actually considered as the first structure of some kind of religious symbol. Okay, so what I want to tell you is what Ashoka had done, he made it more institutionalized and more planned and more beautiful, bigger, better stupas are actually made. So we will be looking for this. So uh, initially Ashoka made the nine stupas, something which you can refer NCRT and you need to remember or I can just even write that also. Just writing the names of nine stupas. They will be asking you questions from this only guys. There, there are more than you know 84,000 stupas are actually made by Ashoka after this. So we, we are not able to study that and it is not, not required also. But about this nine, we will be looking into. So Lumbini and then the guys, uh, please uh, remember one thing, the pronunciation may be different when North Indian pronounce something, something like this, this uh, and uh, when I pronounce it may be slightly different. So don't take it. Uh, take it in that way, okay? So Lumbini and Kapil Vastu and then uh, Ramagram Ramagrama and then uh, Vithapida Vithapid Vita people pronounce it like that but uh, I read it like this Vithapida okay? and then Pava and then Rajagraha Rajagraha, Vaishali, okay, uh, Pippalvina, Pippalvina, and then Kushinagar. Guys, just remember these nine stupas, very, very important. So, after this, around 84,000 shapes Ashoka has made across India and outside India also. So, if you get a statement that Ashoka has constructed stupas, outside India. Is that correct? Yes, it is correct. Not only in India, he constructed stupas outside India. He have given instructions to construct stupas across India and also outside India. And uh, one of the bigger one uh, when it comes to outside India is in Sri Lanka. And there are some history also associated with that. Like uh, the Bodh Gaya, from that, that tree, the sapling, of, sapling is taken and it is taken to Sri Lanka and planted over there and there the stupa is actually made. Now in Bodh Gaya, if you see the, it is not the original sapling of that tree. It is actually again, sapling is taken from Sri Lanka and uh, uh, planted over there and upon that, the new new thing, uh, the month this has been made, okay? So that is actually the history. Let's not get into that, that I'll be discussing later also. I told you Buddhism we will be discussing in three different areas. So this is just, uh, we are discussing only about Ashoka, what developments have happened, not exactly complete Buddhism. This is from the perspective of art and architecture. So everything may not be covered here. Okay. So uh, Anuradha Puram. Anuradha Puram in Sri Lanka. Okay, so after the third Buddhist council, Ashoka instructed uh, to construct shapes everywhere and a lot of such stupas were constructed across India and outside India also. So he also constructed some very beautiful uh, stupas. One of them was Sachi. 
Okay, so guys, uh, now remember that initial nine stupas. That is very important because that is with the relics of Buddha. That is like original, right? But not the later ones. And there are some stupas which is having symbolic relics also. So Sachi, why why this uh, is made more beautiful than the nine stupas which are made with the original relics of Buddha? It is made beautiful maybe because uh, this is this is actually the uh, here is the home of his wife is actually situated okay sri devi so that may be the reason why or that is actually the reason why sachi has made more beautiful now guys what is more important when it comes to stupas we'll try to understand the shape what all things will come in that how the structure will look like what each of you know the part will signify everything need to be understood so what i'll do is i'll draw it the drawing may not be perfect but you can look into some other sources ncrt or internet and make it perfect so just look into the structure guys you can also draw along with me if you want so this i'll draw like this okay and then like this and then okay so i've drawn this much now i'll mark few things within this or let me complete this so from here i am drawing the gate also four gates okay Guys, don't mind the shape. I may not be able to draw it exactly the way it is because of this. And then you will be seeing this one. I'll just draw here. Okay. So what does this green one signify? That is actually the relics of Buddha. Okay. So that is actually the remains. So what I'll do is I'll just mark it like this. So this is the relics. Okay. Now what are these these things like? these blocks you can see actually three of this in fact these are not three these are four one is there in the back side somewhere here in the back side is there these are nothing but gates the entrance so these are toranas okay so torana toranas or torana okay so this is like uh, you can see this is the western side so this is a west torana and this is the south torana and this is the east torna so this is going to be the north torna so you have four different tornas are there and these signify different life stages of buddha i'll come back to that later but let's finish it off now and this is methi methi okay and this is anda okay and then this is harmika harmika and uh, this three is what chatri okay and this one is your danda okay so this three together chatri danda harmika is called yasti i'll draw yasti separately and i'll tell you what each of these what is uh, harmika what is danda or etc okay or even from medhi also i can explain what is medhi what is anda what is yasti or now itself i can just show you see guys it's like this see if you if you take it like this it is something which is like a sitting position of buddha so how it will be meditating position so something like this okay and then uh, may not be okay something like this imagine that this is a sitting position so uh, if i want to tell you what is methi this area this is actually methi 
okay so this one is actually this area what is under under is this area this area and what is st st is this area so that is how you can actually understand so if you see medhi it is the meditating legs of buddha i'll just write it here meditating legs of buddha guys i won't be dictating or i won't be discussing it again you can take it along with me medhi signifies the meditating legs of buddha you can see here okay so medhi is the meditating legs of buddha so what about anda anda is actually the top portion the abdomen and the chest of buddha so abdomen and chest of buddha okay and if you see this is this st is actually the head of buddha so i hope this is very clear medhi is the meditating legs of buddha anda is the chest and uh, the abdomen portion of buddha so this figure you can just remember so this part like you can easily understand okay now i'll just show you one more this one if you take the st i'll be drawing it separately also and uh, this three i'll draw like this okay so this actually represent the three jewels of buddhism so what st signify st actually represent three jewels of buddhism three ratnas what are they we'll be discussing the depth in depth in the next chapter but here this is buddha the awakened one awakened one and uh, then this one is dhamma the doctrines okay that means uh, the preachings of buddha dhamma doctrine and sangha you can see it is getting larger and larger right so sangha is the followers so followers will be larger sangha s a n g h a so followers or orders okay followers so st actually represent the three ratnas or three jewels which is buddha dhamma and sangha now anything left out here guys let me tell you one more thing this gate the four gates the four toranas you have four toranas you can see north east south and west these represent four different life stages or life events of buddha so four life stages or events of buddha four important life stages what are they so buddha's birth so we need to see where it happened and one of the gate will signify that okay and the direction also can be understood from that it is easy okay and then the second stage nirvana enlightenment okay and the third stage the first sermon dharma chakra parivartan we discussed that in sarnath okay so just let me let me write dharma chakra parivartan just let me write it as bc first sermon okay at sarnath and uh, next one mahapari nirvaha mahapari nirvaha so guys if you observe now if you want to you can just plot that in the map of india also something like this i don't want to draw it completely i'll just draw this much only okay so if you plot these four different life stages see the first one the birth of buddha which was in lumbini so lumbini coming somewhere here so i'll just mark lumbini so if you see what is this direction how to how to tell or how to express lumbini it is in the eastern part okay so what i will do is where is the eastern gate this is the eastern gate so what i will do i will mark lumbini here correct so eastern is the lumbini so i can also write birth here in that i hope this is very clear to all of you then what will happen is where this uh, this happened is uh, nirvana right that is in bodh gaya so bodh gaya is coming somewhere here bodh gaya so with respect to lumbini what is the direction of bodh gaya you can see this one with respect to lumbini he have moved towards the south 
so where i will keep bodh gaya which gate it will be south gate so first east and then coming down that is south right so what i do here south gate signify nirvana where it is bodh gaya perfect so that's how the direction will actually help you to know the gates and the gates east gate is there west gate gate is there south is there and north is there these signify four different life stages in that order now again if you see after nirvana what is actually happening first sarman where sarnath so now look at bodh gaya from nirvana where it is located which direction now this is something first lumbini to south now here bodh gaya this is how your directions right the north east south west so from east if you go down that is south that is why i marked this bodh gaya in south so this is directly eastern part so i started with east and this is moving down south now moving left this is how the csa questions will also be asked you started from here you are moving straight line and then you are turning right and then you are turning left and then you are going straight and where you stand and all those things right so here sarnath which direction it is west okay so what was here uh what is the significance the first sermon in sarnath dharma chakra parivartan so what i do here in the gates i'll have to mark that right so this gate i'll have to mark the first sermon in sarnath or i'll just write dcp dharma chakra parivartan and then what happens uh, is this one here this is where your kushinagar kushinagar okay so mahaparinirvaha maha pari nirvana maha pari nirvana nirvana okay so it moves like this so you can see east then came down south so the first gate we we marked east that is the first stage that is the birth then coming down south so that is you know bodh gaya okay and then uh, coming to west that's your first sermon now going up north going up means north so this is the northern gate which is not visible in that figure because we are not drawing the 3d one anyway uh, we can mark it somewhere here you just imagine that this is what the north gate this is the fourth gate this is kushinagar and mahapari nirvana mahapari nirvana so guys i hope this is very clear to all of you they will ask you what medhi signify what medhi signify meditating legs of buddha what anda signify it is a chest and abdomen of buddha what yasti signify it is the head of buddha and what is chatri or what is actually uh, chatri if you see it is the three jewels right so i'm sorry it is not yasti i made a mistake here chatri it is actually yasti include this right yasti include uh, danda also harmika also but chatri is this one 1 2 3 that shows the three jewels of buddhism what are they buddha dhamma and sangha buddha that is the awakened one and then the doctrines that's the teachings or the preachings and this is followers that is larger when you go down you can see that is getting larger and larger so i hope this is very clear and then this is what the relics of buddha there are many many stupas outside india also so some of them are symbolic nine are original i have told you what that nine ones okay so okay now what is vedika vedika is coming somewhere here this is vedika this is vedika near this that is nothing but the wall boundary wall okay so vedika is actually boundary wall anything i have to tell no yeah now vedika of the stupa has many jataka stories so vedika will show you many jataka stories curved on them okay so it is nothing but the tales of the previous birth of buddha so many jataka stories which is carved on them which is nothing but the 
tales of previous birth of buddha okay now torana the gates okay torana uh, of stupa says cultures of yakshinis so torana the gates have the sculptures of yakshini yakshini means the folk gods not the not the fake god folk goddesses okay so uh, one of the yakshini figure which is quite prevalent in buddhist stupas is actually the sculpture of which one salbanjika yakshini salbanjika yakshini so salbanjika yakshini is actually quite famous which you can see in the buddhist uh, supas so what does this mean salbanjika means uh, yakshini holding branches of sal tree which is considered as auspicious in buddhism salbanjika means yakshini who is holding branches of sal tree okay so guys that's it this is what i want to discuss about stupas so i hope you understood whatever we have discussed just remember the diagram just remember what each of that part signifies what is torana right what are the four different gates how the four different gates signifies four different stages of life of buddha and how we can mark it east to north easily four stages like come from east then south then west then north okay and then uh, uh, vedika right yakshini salbanjika yakshini and all those things just remember guys so if you like the video give me a thumbs up and see you in the next session guys thank you so much for watching